Friends, fans, and family, welcome back to our channel. I'm your host, Finia Thomas, and today we're going to be talking to the cast of the Sundance Film Festival's feature film, Our Hashtag J, Romeo and Juliet. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be entertained. <laughs> What was the audition process like for you, Cameron? Uh, the audition process for me was uh, how it usually is for most auditions, you know? Check the email, you get the audition, go uh, to the audition, or actually I sent in a self-tape and then I got called in for uh, a chemistry read. And this chemistry read that we did, uh, this is the first time that I ever did a chemistry read purposefully over the computer because uh, Carrie at the time had you know, I mean, it made sense once he said it. Like he said it to me and it was like the first time that I ever heard of it. And I'm like, yeah, this whole thing's supposed to be shot like on a phone and like, we're gonna be doing this a lot. So that totally makes sense. I don't know why we didn't, that's genius actually. And then he was like, he was like, yeah, so we're gonna do that. And you're gonna read with the different uh, girls and you know, uh, the perfect chemistry read just happened to be with me and Francesca. So uh, yes, we, uh, we had the read. And next thing I knew we were, looking beautiful and getting married and branded together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> straight to branding. Straight to branding. Um, yeah. <laughs> My audition was actually in person and it was uh, it was a horrible day and I thought it was a really bad audition. Um, I I'd spilled a cup of coffee on myself and the floor right before the audition. Um, I had been in one prior that day and someone had yelled at me in the waiting room and it was raining. So I go in there and it's like this room of gorgeous women and I'm just like, fuck, this isn't gonna work because I'm a mess. Um, and I go in there and, and I just cry and I'm unleashing all of this raw emotion and I was really feeling it in the moment because it was such a shitty day. Um, but yeah, I, I got a call back and um, like five chemistry reads later, they really put us through it with that one. And we were zooming before it was cool, which was awesome. What was it like filming this? Because this isn't your typical film as the way it's being shot. We actually had people connected um, on body cams and then they had like two handles on them. And so we were really just directing them around, um, which was really fun. And it, it gave this great sense of intimacy because you were just working with one person and you really got to know what they were about and, and you could really just unleash your emotion, which was really great. It, it was very quick as well. Um, and the actual shoot was, was also very short. It was only three weeks, I think. I think it was three weeks. Yeah, um, yeah, three weeks. We were both really in the zone about focusing on how to portray these characters as real people today and how to be authentic to teenagers who are all over the place and, and really in love. And this, um, this beautiful vehicle of the two of us, of people of color together. So it was yeah. a really fun shoot. The Shakespearean script mm. mixed in with like the teenage angst and the teenage lingo. So how is it with the, the verbiage and the script with this film. I actually had a pretty okay time with it. And I know that it's it's controversial because it is Shakespeare and we're giving it humanity and we're not trying to sit there and perform this like royal theater version of it. We're, we're just talking like normal people and it's very off the cuff and laissez-faire. Um, but I, I really just wanted to languish in what is a 17 year old today and how do they feel when they're falling in love with someone and they have all of this parental pressure and and they're privileged or, or they're just going through a lot in their community and, and what is that feel like and um i found it to be really a, a beautiful journey of of getting in touch with who juliet would be today and she would be very messy but also so strong and thinking about the post me too era and and this woman who really wants to be in charge of her own narrative and this man who's really open to love and and isn't always so hard to be with you know it's 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 about that give and take emotionally and and yeah we were just really trying to reflect modern sensibilities. I used to find Shakespeare language to be really hard because I used to get super in my head about the verse and iambic pentameter and landing on stresses and asking myself why Shakespeare put a stress there and why doesn't my stress here feel as authentic as his and having professors be like, well, you know, it's written this way and you got to follow it and yada, yada, yada. So having this freedom uh, to be able to make it more uh, contemporary or uh, something that, you know, kids our age or younger uh, 
could relate to was definitely fun. It was a little bit scary for me. I'm not gonna lie. I probably was like one of the few people on set that low key was freaking out like underneath thinking that like every single classical Shakespearean person is gonna watch this and like rip us apart for being like, I don't even know why they decided, he decided to read this if he wasn't gonna follow Shakespeare at all. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's what I'm thinking the whole time, like sometimes underneath, but then you would do it and after like the first scene, we just jumped in so hard and committed to the characters so much that that worry went out the door. And from there, it was just honoring the words more, you know what I mean? And honoring uh, being a black man and honoring being people of color and honoring the colorful clothes that we have and the fluid friend that I have and, you know, whatever that may be. Um, yeah, I, I really had a fun time being able to play with this Romeo and do something different. And that's what I want to do with any role that I get. You know what I mean? I want to bring something different to everything and not try to be the stereotypical pretty boy with blue eyes and blonde hair that every girl swoons over and doesn't care about his words and just cares about the way that he looks. I want, I want people to care about my words, you know what I mean? And care about how I feel. And I think that we did a really good job to be able to portray that. You both mentioned the color aspect and how like the Capulets and the Montagues, it's no mistake that it's black versus brown. So mm. talk about the importance of that in the messaging. I'm someone who's mixed and and I'm light skinned and I, I grew up in a very white community. So I am still trying to figure out what my identity is and, and how I want to claim that. And for me, actually being on this film was, was a really beautiful step in my own progression of, of who I am and how I want to be in this world as a woman and um, because I was suddenly surrounded by all these loving people of color and I was like, oh my God, they're here and I'm not alone anymore. Um, but yeah, I think it, there is this element of politicizing the black versus brown and, and the community rifts there. I think it's, it's really important that at the end of the day, we're seeing this as humanity and as love. And, and that might seem like a little bit reductive, but I think, in the way of Romeo and Juliet and putting it with these two different types of brown people, brown and black people, that we're really showing that love is, is love and, and love is so human and universal. They're really the Adam and Eve of romance and they're the beginning of all of it. And, and it was just, it was a beautiful thing to play that alongside Cameron. I wanted to, you know, honor us being people of color, but kind of like Francesca said, I wanted us to be humans. Uh, I wanted us to be two people that other people who are, don't usually see us on screen at this level are able to go, oh snap, I never was able to see myself as a Romeo or a Juliet or someone that's doing something like this, but now I can because I've seen it for the first time. You know what I mean? And uh, with the black and brown thing, it's, it was really interesting filming this for me particularly because where I grew up, I'm from Inglewood, um, and there was a time where there was real tensions between black and brown people. And I had friends and family that got hurt and people that died and there was a lot of tension. And I thought about this during this, but I didn't want to bring it in or bring it towards this because we had like progressed so much and we've grown so much and we weren't really in that time anymore. But there is this aspect of us being people of color, both going through so many tragic things in America right now, whether it be being separated from your mother, your father in a cage, or uh, being killed just for looking like this. Our people have gone through so much trauma together. I think the fact that we did this film with the people that we did uh, will, in a way, kind of remind people that like, we all are going through the same shit in different ways. And, you know, we, uh, black on black crime, you know, I don't believe in it, it's just crime, but it is a thing that is very heightened. And, you know, brown on brown crime is something that's heightened. And why would we want to allow outside factors and outside opinions and outside things and social media and, uh, you know, fake news outlets and whatnot to, you know, affect us so much that we're just killing each other off and there's no one left, you know what I mean? And that's really what it feels like right now in real time that, you know, other than police officers killing us every other day, uh, there still is a lot of 
uh, hate towards our own people because of this institutionalized uh, way that we've been taught to deal with ourselves. And I think that this will maybe be like, damn, I don't want to see a person like who uh, my brother Sadiq, who actually is my boy, watching him die on camera, dude, was like, I was like, oh snap. I don't want that to ever happen. I don't want to see that happen. And I'm glad that my brother is a successful actor who's doing his thing and has worked hard to get to where he is and won't ever have to run into any of that ever. And that won't be in my psyche. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I really do think that we did something powerful within this uh, whole color aspect. How does it feel to be a part of the Sundance Film Festival? I'm thrilled. This is my second year here. First, I was with Stella in the Spades, and now to be here two years later leading a film, a film that's just so revolutionary is amazing. And um, I, I love Sundance. I love the creativity and the community. And uh, hopefully I will be back here with my own films one day. Who knows? You hey. will be. <laughs> yeah, it's an honor. It's a, it's a true honor to be able to show up to Sundance, uh, leading a film. Uh, being a man of color and doing something that hasn't been touched in so long and doing it with, uh, you know, the courage of changing a lot of those norms and the confidence of doing it. I really felt like I, I had a lot of armor to come in with and a lot of like cool things to show people that, you know, we came up with. And so I'm, I'm really grateful that I, I, I was chosen to do this and that I got to do it alongside Francesca and this wonderful cast and this beautiful, diverse, open, lovely people that we got to do it with because it made the three weeks go by so fast. I'm grateful. I'm still basking in it. It doesn't feel real, to be honest. It still feels like, uh, you know, the computer screen's gonna go off tomorrow or in a couple of days and it, it didn't happen. Well, were you entertained? <laughs> we truly hope so. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notifications because we're gonna be dropping conversations and interviews all month long. And you don't miss out on the fun. <laughs> See you on the next one.